Welcome back. One of the most important features of Spring Framework is dependency injection. Spring Framework helps in creating loosely coupled applications. To be able to appreciate dependency injection, you should understand tight coupling and how to create loosely coupled applications. What we'll start with is setting up a simple example to be able to understand tight coupling and also dependency injection. We will use a shortcut to create a Spring project. What we'll do is we'll go to start.spring.io. It's called Spring Initializer. If you do a Google search for Spring Initializer, if you do a Google search for this Spring Initializer, you should be able to come here directly or you just type in start.spring.io. Let's create a Spring project using Spring Boot. What we need to do is let's use Maven here. Java is our language, not Kotlin. Let's move to Java. And we would want to use Spring Boot. I will use one of the latest versions of Spring Boot. If by the time you're watching the video, there is a released version of 2 dot something, you can use 2 dot something as well. So I'm using the snapshot version. You can actually use uh, any version which is greater than Spring Boot 2. So M2 should also be fine. One of the things that you would need to do when you create a project is to give it a name. Just like when you create a class, you give it a package name and a class name. When you create a project, you need to give it a group ID and an artifact ID. Let's give a group ID and artifact ID. So I'll call this com.in28minutes.spring.basics. And I'll call this as spring in five steps. We might have a few more steps than five, but let's just call it spring in five step. I don't really need to add any dependencies when I create a project with Spring Boot. It would by default create Spring as one of the dependencies for the project. So I don't really need to worry about adding any other dependencies. I can go ahead and click generate project. What would happen when you generate project is a zip is created and it would be downloaded to your downloads folder. What I would want you to do is to unzip the zip. So unzip the archive, put it on some folder on your hard disk. Let's say C colon slash spring generate project downloads a zip. If you have extracted the zip file to a specific folder, then you are ready to go into Eclipse and start importing that project in. So how do I import the project? It's very simple. All that you need to do is file import existing Maven projects. So you can type in Maven here. You'd come on existing Maven projects, select existing Maven projects, click next. And then you would need to select the folder where you have copied the zip file to. So you have extracted the zip file to a specific folder, right? So you can either browse through that or copy the path to it and paste it in here. So I've actually put the whole thing in this folder, spring in five steps. So I'm opening that folder up and now you can see spring in five steps, XML in here, just select that project, finish. If this is the first time you are working with the Spring Boot project, the import might take a little while. There are a lot of dependencies that it needs to download to set up this project. If everything works fine, at the end of a few minutes, you should be able to see a project like this. So what I see is source main Java. This is where the Java code will be written. Source main resources. This is where all your application properties will be residing. So test Java. This is where your tests will be written. And you can also see all the different Maven dependencies which are present in here. The great thing about creating a Spring Boot project is Spring is directly added in as a dependency. So you can see there's Spring Context here, Spring Beans. So all these are already added in as your Maven dependencies. So you don't really need to set up a new project where I would add Spring as a dependency. All this kind of stuff are already made available to you. And that's the reason why we are using Spring Boot. So you can see here, you can see Spring Core, Spring Context, Spring Beans. All of these are already available to you to make use of. What we did until now is we used Spring Boot to set up a simple Spring example. There's not a lot of things that are there right now. So if you go ahead and run this, actually, if you say, Spring in five steps application, go here and say right click, run as Java application. What this will do is this will launch up a simple Spring context. You don't really need to worry about it right now. We'll understand what a Spring context is and all that a little later. But you can see that this program successfully runs and prints something on the console. That's sufficient for this step. So in this step, what we wanted to do was to set up a simple example for Spring. 